I grew up on an unpaved cul-de-sac just outside of Detroit, and while gravel roads were considered a downside for motorists, homeowners, and skateboarders alike, my siblings and I were pretty thrilled to have such a ready selection of collectible rocks so near at hand. I mean, you know, some of them were pretty good rocks. Now, as an adult, I, I don't know that I can peer all the way back into my childhood mind far enough to tell you what made a rock good, but it was a universally recognized quality rather than a matter of taste. Like when you found a really good rock, everyone agreed it was, they got jealous. Everybody was jealous of your awesome rock. If it was good enough, they would gather around to appreciate it. Their value was so broadly accepted, in fact, that they formed the backbone of the little sub-economy between my siblings and myself and the other kids in the neighborhood. You had your collection of good rocks, and anytime you wanted to cut in line for something or maybe play with somebody's remote-controlled car, you just whip them out like currency and set about making a deal. The problem, of course, was that whatever inherent value a really good rock has fades away at some point along the road to maturity, and that's a fact that my brother and I learned when the guy in the ice cream truck told us to fuck off. Now, now my memory of this is, is hazy at best. I know it more as a family legend than as an actual recollection, so I'm pretty sure the poor ice cream truck guy was as polite about it as he could be, but the end result of it was me and my brother bursting into the living room in tears because the ice cream man wouldn't even haggle with us about the proper push-pop to really good rock exchange ratio. At this point, of course, my poor mom had to patiently explain how value works. Turns out it really didn't matter how much we valued the rocks. Rocks, even pretty awesome ones, were generally easy to come by. Hell, they covered whole fucking roads with them to save the expense of paving. In retrospect, I feel like we took the news that everything we'd spent our lives searching for and saving was valueless pretty good. It was my first lesson in supply and demand, and because my mother is so fond of retelling that story, it also came to symbolize the innocent naivety of youth. The very image of economic stupidity in my mind has pretty much always been the effort to trade common rocks for money. And that made it all the more impactful when a listener shared a link with me this week to an $85 collection of common rocks on Goop. It's called the Goop Medicine Bag. But, you know, by medicine, it means rocks. And it allowed me, assuming my mom's memory on the year was accurate, to isolate the exact point in my intellectual development when I officially passed Goop customer on the scale of understanding. It was age six. And it actually makes me wish we'd thought to tell the ice cream man that our rocks might relieve his sciatica because otherwise we may have got some fucking ice cream. So, yeah, I had to check the website on this one. Not so much because I doubted Gwyneth Paltrow would call rocks medicine and ad copy, but more because there's just a level of stupid you have to stare at in disbelief for a minute. So I did. You, you just see a picture of eight mostly polished rocks. 85 bucks, you only get eight fucking rocks. They're, they're different colors, and they have a cheap-looking drawstring bag. And the ad copy explains that, quote, these are crystals to encourage clarity, serenity, courage, creative power, and emotional strength. End quote. How do they work? Well, the ad copy goes on to explain that you simply, quote, set a daily intention over your stone of choice and carry it with you for a physical reminder of where you're heading. End quote. Could that not be done with literally any rock or rock sized object at hand? Well, sure, but not medicinally. Hello? Of course, even if you don't buy into this whole talking to rocks makes you more courageous crap, the copy still has something to offer you. Quote, not of the spirit set? Test this set as a pretty addition to your workspace or vanity, end quote. In other words, one way or the other, there's still some pretty awesome rocks. Now give me a fucking push pop. But, but the silliness doesn't end there, right? The site goes on to explain that these rocks are, I swear this is real, quote, made exclusively for goop. The, that silicon dioxide wasn't going to just cool for any damn body. Right, and, and then, because they clearly know what kind of idiots they're dealing with here, they feel the need to warn the prospective buyer that, quote, due to the organic nature of the crystals, colors and sizes may vary. End quote. But, but don't worry, it doesn't matter. All colors and sizes are equally effective in terms of emotional strength encouragement, I guess. So that part's not going to matter in the long run. And look, Goop customers are victims. 
right? They deserve our sympathy rather than our scorn. I really wish they'd make it easier on us by not selling out the goddamn medicine rock bag in the time it took me to write this fucking diatribe. But they are victims. The ad copy clearly bent over backwards to stay just this side of a legal claim. Rocks could, after all, help you remember to be more courageous. But pawning rocks off on people with lies about their value, crime or no, should carry a mark of shame no less than conning people with stock or phone scams. When I did it, I was a six-year-old who wanted a fucking popsicle. What the hell is your excuse, Gwyneth?